Hello, welcome to another video. Main question, will you ever be required to find the indefinite or the definite integral of secant x? The answer is yes and no. Well, the long and short of this is just have it memorized, okay? If you have this memorized, just like you know the integral of sine x or cosine x or tangent x, if you know that, you, you should just have this memorized too. But there's something interesting about this problem. It combines so many techniques and tricks of integration, and it would be a good thing for you to be able to do this from the beginning to the ending, because then you're gonna exercise yourself and you're going to learn or remind yourself of things that you have forgotten. So how do we take the indefinite integral of secant x? Well, this question is mostly relevant to Calculus 2 students, or if you're taking AP Calculus BC, that's where this is gonna show up under integration techniques. Okay, without talking too much, uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Remember the usual thing we do. Okay, uh, we get into this video, and let's go. There are about four different ways of solving this, but I'm gonna take the one that brings in all the techniques I want you to see uh, in this video. So let's start by rewriting the secant x as one over cosine x. It's a rational expression, and let's see what else we can do, okay? Now, whatever I do is something you might employ in another video, so, or another problem. So let's see. Let's say this is the same thing as the integral of one over cosine x dx. Mm, okay, now can I integrate this as natural log of cos? No, we can't do that. Okay, we can't do that because this is a function of x. If this was just x, then we can say, oh, that's it. But this is a function of x, so you can't do that. Um, now, there's something you can do. You know, whenever you're dealing with cosine x, it is easier if you had something like cosine squared x. Okay, because then you can have one minus cosine x and you have something on top that you can do maybe u substitution because you can't do u substitution here because the derivative of cosine x is not one. So you want to create a situation where the derivative of the denominator is the numerator or at least a multiple of the numerator. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. What if we multiply the top and bottom by cosine x? So see what happens. So we write this as the integral of one over cosine x. Let's put this in parentheses, multiplied by cosine x over cosine x. So this is a trick in integration you might need to employ in some other problems, especially if it involves trig, okay? So remember that, this is one trick, delta x, or dx rather. So what you have here is the integral of cosine x over cosine squared x, okay, dx, which you know that cosine squared x is the same thing as one minus sine squared x. So we can write this as the integral of cosine x over one minus sine squared x. Mm. Now you see that u substitution becomes relevant, okay? So now with u substitution, all you have to do is say, if I take the derivative of something under, will it give me the top? Yes. If I take the derivative of sine x, it's going to give me the, the numerator, which is cosine x. So I'm going to say, this is u substitution now, u sub. That's one of the techniques we need to employ. So we say, let u be equal to sine x. Okay, such that du will be equal to cosine x dx. Did you see that? We have generated cosine x dx and we're going to replace it with du. So this entire expression can be written as the integral of du because now we're going to replace cosine x dx with du divided by 1 minus sine squared x. But we said sine x is u so this is going to be 1 minus u squared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it's getting easier because with this expression, 
L D. Okay, with this expression, this is another type of integration. When you see something like this, can you factor the denominator? Yes. If you can factor the denominator, you might need to do partial fractions from your pre-calculus class. Okay, so we might say this is the same thing as the integral of du over 1 minus u. This is difference of two squares and 1 plus u. So now that we've got this um, expression, we need to resolve into partial fractions. And I hope you recall your partial fractions from pre-calculus. Now let's look at what partial fractions tell us. It just says that, say, you have this kind of expression. You have um, um, 1 minus x, 1 plus x. This can be broken down into two expressions such as a over... Um, Let's put the positive one first. 1 plus x plus b over 1 minus x. Now, when you find these values using partial fractions, you'll notice that a equals 1 half and b equals 1 half. So that's what you get. So this expression is going to end up becoming 1 over 2 times 1 plus x plus 1 over 2 times 1 minus x. Okay. So this is what this becomes. And you can see this is just a replica of this. I just switched the x, uh, put x for the u. So this integration expression can then be written up here. I'm going to write it here that this expression here, ta -ta 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 here is the same thing as the integral of 1 over 2 times 1 plus u. Um, plus 1 over 2 times 1 minus u du. Okay, so the du applies to both of them, and that I can break down. I can say this is the same thing as the integral of, I can put the 1 half here, okay? That's 1 half of 1, sorry, of 1 over 1 plus u du plus 1 half of the integral of 1 over 1 minus u. And as you can see, I have 1 half, I have 1 half, I can take out the 1 half for both of them. So this is the same thing as 1 half. The integral of this is going to be natural log of 1 plus u. Beautiful. The same thing, I go to the, well, I have to use the absolute value because I don't know whether u is negative and a lot more negative than 1. So. The same thing, I do the same thing here. Um, this is all, oh, because when I differentiate this, it's gonna be a negative, so this becomes a negative, okay? If you differentiate this, remember, you're gonna differentiate, if you differentiate this one, um, it's gonna give you a negative. If you do um, a U substitution again, you're gonna get a negative, which comes out here. So this is gonna be negative one half of the natural log of, um, 1 minus u. Okay. Oh, absolute value. Absolute value. So this is what we have, and we can just put these together, factor out the 1 half, apply the law of logarithms. Okay, let's write that. That's going to be 1 half of ln 1 plus u. We'll put this here. Um, minus ln of 1 minus u. Okay. Um, Hey, again, like this. So we know the law of logarithms that when you're subtracting two logarithms, you can take the ratio of the arguments. So this is the same thing as one half of ln of the absolute value of one plus u over one minus u plus c. Now, you can leave this like this after you substitute back your u. What are u? u is sine x. So let's actually write the final answer. So this is going to be um, 1 half of the natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus sine x over 1 minus sine x plus c. This is one of the answers you will see in textbooks or in other kinds of presentations that are made. But this is not the most common answer. Let's get rid of this. The most common answer you will get is something that looks like this. Let me write it. It looks like this. 
it is the natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus the tangent of x plus c. This is what most people use and in most cases it is most relevant because this doesn't really look pretty at all. So how does how is this different? There's another way you can get this by doing some smart substitution, okay? Um, like I said, there's so many ways you could have done this, four different ways, and one of those ways would have led you here, but you could also go from here to here. Let's see how. Now, let's transform this into this by, again, applying something you learned from your trig class or your pre-calculus. I don't know where you took your trig, but you can transform this into this. Now, let me show you how this becomes this. You look at this expression, this can also be written as the natural log of the absolute value of one plus sine x, okay, over one minus sine x. You can see this is then squared. Sorry, not squared, brought to one half plus c. See, I just moved this back up there now, I'm going to deal with what is inside here. How do I do it? I do something similar to what I did here. You know how I multiply the top and bottom by cosine? This time, because this has two terms, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. Well, conjugate, that's what I would call it. Well, it's a conjugate because it gets rid of something we don't want. So let's see. This is going to be the same thing as the natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus sine x okay over 1 minus sine x okay we're trying to get this answer okay multiplied by this the conjugate I'm just going to change the middle sign 1 plus sine x okay over 1 plus sine x okay same thing then I put the plus c and this is raised to the power 1 half that 1 half goes back there well let's see this is still the natural log Hey, come on, it's natural log of the absolute value. If you multiply this by this, what, what are you going to get? You're going to get 1 plus sine x all squared. And if you multiply this by this, you're going to get 1 squared minus sine squared x. And 1 squared minus sine squared x gives you cosine squared x. You see, this is going to give you 1 squared minus sine x plus sine x minus sine squared x. So the two the sine x and the minus sine x cancel out. You have one minus sine squared x, which gives you cosine squared x. So what we have here is cosine squared x. Remember, we're still taking the square root of it plus c. <laughs> okay, let's go one more step. And this is now gonna give you, if you take the square root of the top, it's just gonna give you one plus sine x. So this is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of one plus sine x over, if you take the square root of this, you're gonna get cosine x. Okay, plus c. Now, we've come to something that looks like this because this expression can be split in two. This is the same thing as the natural log of the absolute value of one over cosine x plus sine x over cosine x, okay, plus c, which is equal to this universally accepted solution as the indefinite integral of secant x. I believe you picked up something in this video, some skill, or you reminded yourself of something that you may have forgotten, or you've reinforced your knowledge or understanding of these concepts. Remember to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, study, do whatever you've got to do. Most importantly, don't stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.